This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, welcome back. Another Tuesday episode, and it may sound a little bit different this week. A little more interruptions, email sounds, cars, planes, trains, automobiles, all the other weird stuff that can be uh, found in the daytime because I had to record a majority of this early, which means some of the campaigns may have ended already because they got canceled, you know, things like that happen. Um, but it was going to be a long day at work. I'm recording this now, three in the morning as usual, but that's because I just got off work, right? So um, the stuff that's in there, you know, did my best uh, to try to make it sound good, but that's just what happens, either no episode or try to get, you know, around it, however is possible. Uh, that being said, there's plenty uh, going on, lots of different types of games. Not so much in the war games, but everything else, there seems to be quite a few. As you can see, 70, which is uh, pretty high for a regular Tuesday. Lots of stuff on Game Found. Some of it I had to include early because by the time you see this, it will have launched, but by the time I was recording, it hadn't yet. And it should be like just launching but on a Wednesday when you guys are actually able to uh, watch these episodes. So I figured it was best that you be able to see it, get involved, and uh, check out the campaigns and all that kind of cool stuff, even if it had to be done with a preview. So you'll see um, it'll say TBD, and I'll try to make adjustments uh, once it actually launches in the descriptions so that you have all the accurate information and all that kind of cool stuff going on. Saw Jurassic World, the finale. It wasn't as bad as people said it was. I don't know what they're all complaining about. So I didn't like the last two, but this one seemed to be better than those ones. So just how it goes. Let's see about this week's episode. If you're a big fan of trains, the moon, and maybe even trains on the moon, All Aboard Games has another round of games for you in the 18xx series. So if you are, have been looking out for New York or 1822 or... Like I say, 21 the moon, um, then you're set here. These are uh, a pretty standard type of game that a lot of people haven't been enjoying. And now you get more of what you already love. Then we have a game about the patron saint of the lazy. It is the sloth. Five more minutes, play your dreaming adventure. This is a cute little game about uh, running around taking naps, hitting the snooze button, and going from there. I think you even got like coffee sloth and other stuff. So there you go. If that's your uh, mindset and you think that uh, it's better to play a game about napping rather than just take a nap, then uh, there you go. A little bit more info there on nap champ and all that kind of cool stuff you can be. And we have one that's doing pretty well, Skyrise, Game of Auctioning and Artistic Egos. And you can see it's a beautiful game, nice pieces. The uh, game board itself looks pretty awesome, uh, being something that is like Bioshock Infinite out there in the clouds. It, this would be actually probably a good game board if that's what you wanted to repurpose it for. But uh, yeah, some cool pieces. I don't know, it's not quite steampunk, what do they call it, skypunk maybe? But Cities of the Clouds, it's a neat idea. And uh, lots of cool things can be going on in there. Might be it's a prequel to Bioshock Infinite. Ooh, that's an interesting way to think about it. You got different sculptures, churches, all that kind of crazy stuff to go along with it. So it's pretty neat, it says the pre-washed minis. I think that is close to the stuff Awakened Realms is doing with their, um, it's basically a Zenithal priming and that that they do as part of their, it's like, what was it called? It's like sun washed, something like that, sun something. Then I didn't want to put this one in a uh, war game section, but it is war themed. John Cohn likes to make smallish games. This one is about minefields. So if you want a different form of minesweeper, I guess, then maybe you could try this one out. And I believe it's print and play, but they're going to be able to make a manufactured version of it if that's what you want to do. Uh, otherwise, you can make it for yourself. Then we got a game called Absurdia that's not doing so well. It is a party game about persuasive skills. And you can see it is very sparse. 
no real art, no real design, just, what is that, Comic Sans maybe thrown in there. Um, it's not going to do well because y they haven't really invested uh, a whole lot of time in the art design. And that just makes people feel like they're not getting much value. So I would say if they did want to go with that, they could either make it print and play since it is so sparse. There's no real loss in making it uh, yourself and uh, save all that manufacturing cost, but still be able to get it out there. Um, otherwise, go back and redo the art, make it more appealing so people feel like they're getting more value and then they'll be much better off. Then we have Meowrickle Marshmallow. This is a 3 to 12 player, I guess, party game. And uh, they give you a little bit of a breakdown. Um, cats and marshmallows, I don't really think that they, they end up going all that well together. There's lots of little movies and things you can watch if you wanted to check it out. Uh, but the theme is confusing. It's one of those Japanese games that somehow mashes a bunch of things together and oh hong kong it's yeah you know asian <laughs> but it's like one of those japanese games throwing all the weird stuff together so yeah if you want to check it out and you're looking for a party game and somehow space cats and marshmallows make sense to you then give this a go otherwise i think they really need to describe more how the game plays the feeling and all that kind of stuff same kind of world this is seafood print and play about cats feeding your cats but they made it print and play so it's a bit easier uh, on the wallet for people to figure out and you're going to be knocking objects off the shelf i guess that you build and onto the food so it does the things that cats normally do and that makes the theme fit uh the concept uh it, it makes it the concept easier to understand and uh, cat people, if they want to play as their cat or with their cat, then maybe they can do it all together. Then on Game Found, which is going to be very busy uh, with all kinds of stuff going on, uh, we have Amygdala by Game Brewer. And this is one of those abstract games that has a bunch of these crazy psychedelic colors and uh, weird shapes of things that are supposed to, I think, elicit forms of dreams. And you can get different versions of it. Um, box, you know, and the board and all that. It, it, I guess they come with different versions. And it's double-sided so you can make different colors. There's just a lot going on. I mean, if you're one of those Puff Puff Give people, then maybe this will be uh, uh, more exciting because <laughs> of uh, all the crazy colors and things to excite your, your brain. Um, but otherwise, it's one of those abstract ones, I guess like Azul maybe you are into those types uh, mood markers so maybe it's even trippier then we have a uh, campaign about somebody who did their homework this is compounded and they peer-reviewed it and they made it better and that makes it a uh, a better version of their chemistry board game and then they came out with another science-based one called lab notes that's a roll and write so you can pick both up uh, if you want. As you can see, fits pretty much the theme. You got some test tubes and different deals. Looks uh, similar to, in the lab, the Pandemic expansion. So, um, you know, it's it's an interesting way to go about it. I guess also, uh, this looks like organic chemistry. Maybe you're taking that six-sided die and you have some regular basic uh, atoms uh, that you can throw in there, different elements, and, and now you're making different connections to go along with them. So, yeah, seems neat. Maybe it's uh, fun for people that are in high school chemistry to learn a little bit more, to get excited about, uh, get them started on uh, understanding the how science works. Then we have Gathering Gloom. This is a co-op game about a family of monsters, ghosts, werewolf, witches, vampires, all that kind of stuff. And I guess you're going to play one of each and try to keep the neighbors out. So um, Suspicion seems to be one of the mechanics. You get different play mats and tokens and other things like that. It's got an interesting um, style as far as the artwork goes. It's 
uh, unique and interesting unto itself. You can get some minis if you don't want to use the tokens, that kind of stuff going on. But it seems neat. Uh, I feel a little bit Rocky Horror with uh, the way that the storyline goes because you're you're playing all the weirdos and you're trying to keep the neighbors away. For those of you Monty Python fans, this is the holy hand grenade of Antioch in the most non suable way possible, known as the heavenly hand bomb. Um, you know, they, they don't want to get sued, but they wanted to create something cool. So basically the uh, quick little Christmas ornament looking thing that was used to blow up the uh, evil bunny has uh, been presented in its own little game, poem, psalm thing, and it's got a little bunny inside and uh, a neat little game. Uh, there's also some dice jail thing that they're producing and the gelatinous cube and the die of destiny. So, you know, inventive people trying to be inventive comes with the game. So I threw it in the game section, but uh, it would also be a neat little knickknack to throw on your shelf or your, uh, you know, your DVD collection. And then we have an interesting approach to the escape room. This is mystery poster number one, A Greek Life, and it is a poster that is itself the escape room. So you can see how it all breaks down, and you're going to pour over it and find all the different puzzles and neat things that go along with it and uh, try to solve it out. It shows a box, so maybe it folds out instead of rolls up, uh, but basically it's a poster. Then we have a reissue of a Pagan Fate of Roanoke. So if you like the previous game and want more, they have a little bit more that they're offering. If you like this Darkest Dungeon art style and you weren't able to get it before, now is your opportunity. And uh, I guess errata cards are available for the previous backers, which is nice. Have a quick reprint at a low cost for those folks. And like I say, the biggest sell point, I think, is that Darkest Dungeon... Um, art style as its its own thing and if you've already played the video game or you've played the board game uh, a version of Darkest Dungeon then I'm sure it's going to suck you back in. You can play it on Tabletopia because it has already been released. This is a second printing with some uh, fixes and adjustments to it. Then we have at first glance Ugly Mask Character, right? That's not the name of the game. That's the name of the campaign. It, it makes it really difficult to find. Um, you know, maybe there's some uh, cultural misunderstandings on how to best get people to try to go through this game. It's hard to understand. The artwork is weird. Um, I mean, you can take a look at it, and if you think that you enjoy it, maybe give them some uh, ideas on... Uh, how best to present this information because really this is more like a um, Japanese uh, newspaper ad than it is a real Kickstarter campaign. Uh, they're not asking for too much money, which is uh, fine, but I think really the difficulty is in uh, explaining the game as a game and not so much as a pitch. And you can see from Battle of the Breweries, they've done a better job of that, <laughs> of presenting. Hey, here's a game. Here's It's a card game. Here's the cards. And you can see the hops because it's about beer and specifically about brewing beer. So that fits the theme. It's easier to understand. You can get um, different cards that go along with it with different you know beers and whatnot. Each one's fully illustrated. So if it makes sense and it's getting started, even though it's like a 21 and over thing and Drinking games don't necessarily do well, but brewing and distilling games pretty much, uh, you know, are on par with uh, everything else that you find on Kickstarter and the different spaces because they are game first and drink later type of deals. You can drink while you play, but it's not required, you know what I mean? And you can even play these things sober because they cared about the game. Uh, all these different types of brew things. Maybe you can even extend it to another hobby if you're a home brewer. So lots of different ideas, things thrown in there. Why am I getting emails? Um, so that you can uh, you can all check out, and uh, you know it's probably going to be backed and successful. Then we have Depths trading card game. Trading card games don't do all that great because people need to get all the cards if they're going to do all of the risk. 
There's also not a lot of art going on here. These are just silhouettes. That is um, probably not enough to get people enticed into a trading card game. If you look at things like Magic the Gathering and other very successful games, they're, you know, full color. Something interesting, some type of story told by the art. The art helps sell it. So it says it, if it's funded, they'll put it on there, but it's not going to get funded if you don't show what it's going to be like. People think when they see it, oh, that's what I'm buying. So I think that is a miscalculation um, on their end as far as the marketing goes. Do the three sharks. Do something. Show something. Show what people are going to buy. Uh, don't show something that isn't the product that they're going to buy because they're going to be disappointed either way. Then globe trotting is an interesting concept. It is a board game played out on a globe. So you're going to be doing mapping uh, with these uh, dry erase markers. Oh, I'm sure they're dry erase. Wet, wet erase might be too much. And you're going to be finding the shortest distances as you spin this thing around and uh, try to come up with... Uh, you know, the best routes. And uh, keeping in mind that countries change all the time, but continents don't. So it looks like they've, uh, rather than change borders, names, all that kind of stuff, they just uh, went with the colors of the continents, which means this thing will probably be sticking around for a while. I know you guys are uh, Animaniacs fans out there. And if you watch the new ones from Hulu, they had to update the ones that we used to watch in the 90s with, I think, like 100 new countries. So um, this scheme gets around that so you, you won't have to be like oh well they forgot to put in south sudan you know what i mean all these other new countries thrown in there so i think that's a good idea otherwise it's just like running around the great or the amazing race uh you got bucket list locations that you might want to see different uh, other cool things i'm never going to be healthy enough to go on the amazing race I'm doing all that running so this might be a fun way to uh to make that happen and start planning some travel for the next few years so we'll see how that goes, depending on uh, the airline prices. I hear some buddies went to the airport, and it was cheaper for them to buy airline fuel for their big trucks than it was to get regular fuel. So, you know, apparently, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a, it, it's the problem. Really, is what they're saying. It's the speculators and the people that are uh, in the big uh, oil companies that are causing the prices to be so high. Speaking of disappointments, anti-fun. So your name is disappointing. Why would people buy it? <laughs> so, I mean, they thought that they're going to be cute. They don't care. Consumers don't care. They give you 10 seconds uh, when they're looking through something. If you already said this is a boring game or this game sucks, you might get a few different people that are, uh, you know, in on the joke. But otherwise, you know, it's really not showing what's so fun about this thing. And you already got the name in there saying that it's not fun. You've shot yourself in the foot. Then you have Battle for Glory, Strategic Combat. These games actually do okay. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, this $35,000 goal is achievable. Um, just with the current market being what it is. And discretionary income is being squeezed by energy costs. So, you know, it's hard to say. But the um, theme of Arena Combat actually has been successful in the past uh you have different uh moves and cards and things like that if it isn't successful in the wanting just this print run then there are print on demand games especially for card games that um can make things for you know a reasonable cost uh make playing cards and other places like that so it doesn't seem like it's gonna be a huge problem uh come out with the different decks and all that kind of stuff it's just a matter of is it going to be cost effective in their their current iteration um they might have to like i said distribute the printing to like a print on demand system and uh maybe go from there uh but yeah that uh, i think it's totally possible with the appeal in the market um for games like this that fit that uh, gladiatorial combat theme uh, that it could fund. On to the casual games, Cheese Factory. I've not seen anyone uh, make a Cheese Factory game before. Jason Anarchy, uh, I guess, has created some other ones, so good for them. And here you go. What does uh, go into cheese? 
mainly milk, some type of uh, rennet or uh, other bacterial thing. Again, that keeps being me. I don't. My job is going to probably keep doing that. For some reason, I can't shut off the audio. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you want more cheese? You're not lactose intolerant. You can get that. There's add-on games. Um, I don't know about your friend is sad. I remember Reap being pretty successful. Uh, there's some other ones. Um, yeah. Good times. Then another one, when you get these Tuesday episodes, we got a lot of ep things where people just need help understanding how to put a game uh, campaign together. I try to be fully inclusive of everything out there just in case there's something you're going to miss. This game here, Island of War, has nothing to show. They have this interesting graphic, but they have nothing to show, so it's probably not going to fund. Um, yeah, why do I keep putting these up here? It's because every game deserves to be seen by the people that might want them. And I'm not here to be a tastemaker. I'm here to ex just present the information to you guys so that you can find the things that are your favorites. And, um, you know, you guys like small games too. So if I were to throw every single small game out, then you'd be definitely missing on something important and special and awesome. Even though I have to keep reiterating um, what these guys need to do in order to make it uh, a real campaign for you. Then we have Land of Quests, which seems like a very minimalist game or some type of terrain. It's hard to tell just by looking at it what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, it seems like you're going to be taking these uh, various pawns and moving them around and avoiding obstacles that are somehow in the table. And then you have um, these paddle-like uh, deals. There's dice and then... They call them cardinal points, but I've never seen uh, a board game piece quite like it. Uh, maybe they're like a, a different type of die, like a D4 or D3 or something. Um, or maybe they are some type of compass. Hard to figure out just from, uh, from glancing at it real quickly. But if you need something that plays out, maybe like a complicated game of chess, this might be something that interests you. For me, it's just a little too sparse. I don't know how well this is going to do because uh, Cards Against Humanity has pretty much fallen off um, the uh, the roadmap. They got sued. Um, if you're following Street Masters, the people that uh, screwed up their order and is causing years of problems for them are actually the Cards Against Humanity people that owned Black Box. So I don't know how popular this will be, but more power to them. They create a uh, cartoon system using the Cards Against Humanity call and response rules. And that's just an interesting way of telling story and finding things to make people laugh. Um, and looks like they got movie quotes. They got business stuff in there. Maybe it's funny. Maybe give it a shot uh, if you were a big fan. And some type of custom party dice to go along with it. Um, I mean... They can call it Bob and Joe. Maybe that'll help. But uh, name never got me any <laughs> special attention from uh, backers and things like that. So uh, I'm hoping the simplicity isn't too simple and people will jump back on it. It, For all its flaws, Cards Against Humanity is probably the best uh, icebreaker when you're stuck with a bunch of people you don't know. Such as with Brothers Bond the game. They have a real game. It's a real campaign. It's based on something that has previously been released, I think, as uh, either a video game or um, some... Uh, I forget what it... I don't know. It seems like it, the something that I've seen before. You have this anime style, standees game, different dice, characters, blah, blah, blah. All that fun th stuff going on. Uh, if you're into these anime style games, then maybe check them out. There's uh, some type of a, a journey involved. You get the different minis to upgrade from the standees if you want to. I do not watch much anime, so I'm not all that familiar with it. Um, I know there was some game called Brothers, and I'm not sure if it, this is the same deal. 
but uh, apparently if they were nominated for an Eisner, then uh, something cool has got to be going on and people have to be paying attention to it. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and do that. Uh, I, it's only been up for a few minutes, so uh, as of the time I'm recording this, so I'm pretty sure it will get uh, a lot more attention by the time the, the rest of the day goes on and you actually see this episode. More for the print and players, this Proxy War. So this is a strategy game for you to check out. And uh, some neat little uh, rifle miniatures, all that kind of stuff. We got a lot of proxy wars going on these days. Syria, even in Ukraine, like all these different things between different uh, superpowers. So it might be an interesting time to uh, come out with uh, one of these types of games. I think it's going to continue and more as resources become more scarce. Um, you might see a lot more of this going on. The whole, uh, uprising in the, what was it? The Arab Spring is what it was called. Uh, was mainly about water rights to begin with. Right. And then it bloomed into something else. So, uh, I would fully expect to see, uh, more of that going on and it might be an interesting subject to explore. So, you know, about more of how the world is currently functioning. Uh, if you start playing some games that uh, take it on as well. So check it out. I know the CIA uses this type of uh, gaming to uh, train their uh, their agents and all that too. And I'm going to show you some draft stuff because it will be live by the time you see this episode, but it's not live at the time I'm able to record the episode. So uh, first one out for GameFound is Brett Walda by Phalanx. Something about the Dark Ages. You get a couple of little uh, minis and things to go along with it. And, uh, you know, some Viking looking um, terrain pieces that go along with it. Uh, you can check out the different parts of the game. I can't really describe it too much because it's a draft page and it's not going to show a whole lot. But, um, yeah, you can check it out for yourself. I just don't want you to miss out on anything super important and special that might go with it about the anglo-saxons which feels very viking same thing with the project draft this has already come up before and then they brought it back down and then they re-released it this is the umbrella academy based on the umbrella academy comic books from mantic games not based on the netflix show so the look of the characters are going to be like i say specifically from the comic books and going to have that appeal and that style um, you can get the box that holds everything. That's always awesome to have a storage solution. And you can see what these guys look like as uh, grown-ups. You can also get their child versions um, if you back. And yeah, so they have names instead of just numbers, all that kind of stuff in the comics uh, that you don't really get in the show. The next season of the show is coming up within a few weeks. So it's a great time to release it now as opposed to um, back when they released it before and there just wasn't much buzz so hopefully it will get fully released and all that kind of cool stuff mantic did a great job on hellboy i'm sure they're going to do a great job on this one then in the minis games we have the pit and it's one to four players set in some weird dark universe and we'll check out the, what the minis and all that look like so there's a solo mode as you find your way out of whatever crazy things are going on we have red x which is kind of like an undead looking fella. And then we have all these folks. Spider lady. So there's there's quite a few different characters you can be. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of universe they're really from. As you can see, also I guess they have themselves uh, standee versions you can check out. They get pretty big. And I don't really understand what the... The theme is, other than possibly being something like trying to escape out of hell, and, uh, yeah, so maybe some type of arena combat that, that you fight, but uh, some neat pieces, and uh, you get standee or miniatures version, depending on your budget. This one I do know about, because I backed it, and I backed the original Order of the Vampires, uh, Vamp Order of the Vampire Hunters. I painted a bunch of it already. Haven't painted the whole thing. Getting there. Um, this is Ancient Blood, which is a prequel to Order of the Vampire Hunters, and this is the original soundtrack. But it's something that they do every single time. They release a soundtrack campaign that also allows you to purchase 
the original games. So uh, Darkgate happens to have a certain amount of inventory still left over, and they run a second campaign. Usually the, um, as you can see, if I roll it over here, the soundtrack's only a couple bucks, it's six bucks here, and uh, it gives everybody an opportunity to buy the stuff uh, a second time. It's a smart marketing move, manages to uh, get them uh, free of inventory, and, um, you know, build more interest in the game, gives it a second opportunity to be in front of eyeballs. Uh, they're all like some great models. Um, that's something that uh, Dark Game Games has done a great job of in the three games that I have purchased from them so far. Uh, I've been happy with uh, everything. It's a little like Zombicide with vampires, and that's not a bad thing. So I've gotten the previous soundtracks. I'll probably go ahead and back this one. I'll click on it as soon as I'm done doing this voiceover, and uh, everybody be happy. Then GameFound is starting to get into the war game world, and this is Wars of Re Religion, France from 1562 to 1598. And if you're into war games, you get the same basic stuff that you get in most of them. You get the cardboard pieces, tell you about your units, you get maps, all that kind of stuff. You can buy other games, take place in Europe in different time frames, not just in that 16th century world. And you know, if you're into it, you're into it. Maybe you're into World War One and Two. This is World War Two. These are tanks, Soviets and Germans, and they're all 3D printable, so you can uh, um, get these ready for whatever campaign that you are going to be running. And you can scale them up, down uh, if you think you need to. And there's just a whole bunch of variety of them. Some of them ruined. Some of them ready to roll around the table. So depending on what game you're playing. There's lots of different variety. As you can see, they come apart. So you can mess them up or add new things or use them for whatever combat you like. Just like the plane flying over my head. Feels like constantly <laughs> during the daytime I'm recording this one. We have an Air Force collection. Uh, only three bucks. So if you wanted to print out helicopters and uh, planes of different types, then uh, you can do that. Pretty simple, but... You know, you can scale them up and down depending on what you need and uh, have your favorite type of combat up in the sky. Then for Cyborg, the futuristic Morkborg, we, Morg boy, uh, we have Pills Full of Gods. So new weapons, classes, cults, different things to exist in uh, a weird future. Um, yeah, and this is a zine. has a bunch of weird, interesting things because that is what Morg boy is all about, being weird. Then we have a reprint. This is Marlowe's Meyer and Hot Springs Island. These are RPG hex crawls for um, whatever game system that you want to use them on. And I guess it came out originally in 2018 at Gen Con and it got some any awards and uh, now it's just time to print it out again for you. Um, and you can check out all the, the neat little pieces along with it. I like the art, it feels extremely Frazetta. Um, on that cover piece especially. So, I mean, these guys are you know, picking up the classics and that's always awesome. Um, Martin Zober, I guess, made uh, this uh, this piece here. So maybe look him up for, for more artwork if he's uh, keeping it to the classics. Actually, let's just do a little field trip and look at some of the other stuff he's come out with. It's a very interesting version of He-Man some other cool stuff. This is on his art station page. And uh, yeah, so I'd encourage you, go in and uh, click on the artists, see which ones you like. You'll probably find the people that have been making the art for your favorite games make a lot of more great stuff that you'll enjoy. And maybe they have some art books and other stuff to go along with it. This guy's doing a good job. All right, back to everything. This is Mysteries of the Multiverse for Mutant Crawl Classics. And let's see what they got going on. Um, Mutant Crawl, Crawl Classics and Dungeon Crawl Classics are they're RPGs that are rules light. They have a bunch of tables and different things that go along with it. Um, but the concept is to be in a weird future that uh, you know humans and things aren't exactly um, the only intelligent life out there. So. Uh, I guess they're continuing that concept. I can't really see what if it's like a sphinx or a weird space cat that this 
guys on because I can't really see the whole thing. But um, if you're into the whole multiverse uh, stuff that's going to be going on with uh, D and D, and you want something for yourself to be able to play in DCC or MCC, maybe this is something that will help you towards that goal. And for regular Morgue Boy, we have Lord of Chains. So it is uh, inspired by the lyrics of Worm Witch, which is probably a metal band I haven't heard of. Um, and there you go. Steal a blade, kill the Lord of Chains. Okay. That sounds interesting. Um, you get your eyes plucked out, gutted by grave robbing scum, become liquefied. A lot of things going on with the eyes. So maybe that's a clue for your, your party, uh, something that they might have to give up. Uh, you can be Odin, giving up an eye, or uh, Oedipus, if you're really weird, because uh, uh, he gets his... No, who is it that gets their eyes? Samson gets his eyes plucked out, Oedipus gets his eyes plucked out, and Odin just gives away one, right? Isn't that how it all works? Then we have, uh, speaking of Odin, he liked to fight trolls. Well, now we got more trolls. This is uh, Hemo's... Writing on Trolls, a foul D&D supplement with, okay, it says a table with thousands of trolls. Okay, a thousand trolls. I don't see it, that going on, but maybe it's like you can do 10, 10, and 10 and have different options. And as you mix and match them, you get a weird different type of troll. Whether they live under a bridge, whether they uh, have this weird type of scaly body, there's a bunch of different types of trolls in uh, D and D. Um, they don't all have to be destroyed by acid or fire. They can all be affected by all the different types of damage. But um, they're ugly, and they heal fast, and you want to beat them up. And we have sheer interdimensional horror RPG. Jump into hell and steal whatever isn't nailed down. Sounds like SCP Foundation. Uh, survey, hold, explore, acquire, retrieve. Sounds a lot like the way secure contain and protect goes together so um looks like it takes place in a weird world where you're going to be jumping through riff style to do different things um and that playing cards will be your randomizing uh function so yeah that's a, a neat way to play if you don't like dice then maybe cards makes it work a little easier and jumping through hell with a big old gun feels a lot like doom then Legendary Kingdoms, this is the third book, and it is Pirates of the Splintered Isles, Choose Your Own Adventure game book. So if you don't have a DM, you can go through the book and still have a fantasy adventure style thing going on. Um, ages 12 and up makes it easy uh, for people that don't have a DM or their kids want to be able to start in a fantasy world and they haven't quite figured it out yet or don't have many friends that also want to play, then this would be a good way to help them out. You get some free samples from the other books, so that's always awesome. And you can check it out from there. Uh, let's see what the pledges have, if there's ways to get the previous books. There you go. You get a three-book bundle. Most of the time, um, D&D books are like 50 bucks a piece, so these ones are half that price, and you can get uh, some better versions if you want that look nicer. Um, I mean, choose your own adventures. Maybe you run it through a couple times. So having that lower price point is nice, makes uh, more sense. But if you're going to have all these interesting characters to go along with it, then maybe you can expand them out into other stories as well. And, uh, you know, that'll help give a jump start to uh, your, yours or your child's RPG experience. Libations, Book of a Thousand Drinks. This is usable in whatever system you want to. These are just ideas on... Uh, Things that people can shove down their throat and enjoy. So it doesn't really give you stats or anything like that. More just conceptual uh, things that maybe they're looking for. They can be um, a MacGuffin in your story. Uh, or they can just do some weird things and send you to the dreamlands or other weird points of consciousness. Then we have Tyrant's Quest calling itself a radical new RPG rulebook for people that have not found something in their uh, current games that they've been looking to play. 81 classes, it's a D100 system, and um, multi-classing is supposed to be a big part of it. I don't know if that makes it overly complicated, 
Uh, it says tier-based leveling. So, I mean, it, I'm all for a new system of leveling if it's innovative. Um, a lot of level stuff doesn't make much sense. It'd be making a lot more sense if you got points. Remember Dungeon Siege? <laughs> I like the way that Dungeon Siege, way back when, like 20-something years ago, um, if you used... Uh, melee attacks, you got better at melee. If you used ranged attacks, you got better at ranged. So it was a different type of experience system. So you weren't necessarily putting points or getting um, better at things that you didn't use. You only got better at things you did use. That's a system I would like. I don't know if that is here uh, in this one. But, you know, if you're feeling wanting, if you haven't found uh, what you're looking for in one of the many uh, RPG systems that currently exists, then maybe give this one a shot um d10s are easy to come by and otherwise it seems to be pretty much laid out in similar fashion to uh other rpgs so it should be easy to pick up if you can find the things in it that you're missing other places then we have gray shade dark fantasy novels and rpg for the great assassin world powered by 5e um the hard thing about being an assassin is a lot of times you're on your own and uh, it's hard to put a story together for a party. And if they've cracked that code and made an interesting world that makes it uh, possible to be a group of assassins all working together, then really I think that could be a whole lot of fun. I like games like Thief that and the original uh, Assassin's Creed, the early ones, uh, where you're more of a sneaker. And uh, I prefer to do that than guns blazing. So uh, if they've found a way to make that work in 5e, I applaud them. And then it is still Pride Month, so this week's entry uh, is Alchemistresses. This is the queer magical girl game about reincarnation and feelings. Um, it's an RPG. I don't know what necessarily a magical girl is. <laughs> um, I met a few, dated them. They turned out not to be. Uh, <laughs> so that's my experience in that, that department. Um, but uh, I Yes, I don't know. Um, it, it, people just sit around and talk about their feelings, and maybe they find an adventure that helps them express those feelings. Uh, if that helps, I don't know necessarily what this system provides. You couldn't get just from uh, good storytelling and another mechanical system, but uh, I'm going to guess less combat oriented because it doesn't seem to describe anything about that. Uh, even if your feeling is wrath, rage, and blow stuff up. Back on GameFound. Like I said, it's a busy week for GameFound. Archaic Age of Darkness. So it's a tabletop RPG with a whole new world assigned to it. Um, you know, it's got all the basic stuff. Classes, races, dark fantasy, all that kind of thing. It's got Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, you know, rest in peace. They managed to get him to do it. John Cassier, the voice of uh, the Crypt Keeper. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they paid a bunch of money on Cameo to get people to say stuff. So, hey, if it works, it works. Give it a shot. The artwork looks all right. I'm not sure if we've already covered this before. Uh, I end up looking at things multiple times during the week, and then I forget maybe it's been two or three weeks ago. Uh, we're at, what, like almost 10,000 now? They're all just going together in my brain but uh, if you haven't checked it out before maybe you can check it out now out there on game found you got 46 days it's it's been a while uh i'm assuming with the backer count uh being what it is at this time that it just got released but it's hard to say and we have trials of walnemi or walnemi mesoamerican so this is south american uh world that they're throwing together 25 monsters if you need something that would fit there's a bunch of stuff in Temple of Annihilation um, that would go with it. Two races, uh, boons, sub-races, blah, blah, blah. All that kind of fun stuff to go along with it. you got your ziggurats. Uh, I guess that would be maybe in like Argentina with this wilderness, with the being on a plane. Uh, the new class is a keeper and upholds culture and ideals of society. So it's like a anti-ranger. Um, neat idea. There was Cleric of the City 
in one of the early Unearthed Arcanas um, that I thought was an interesting concept. Um, maybe that is a, an offshoot there. You have the obsidian uh, swords, axes, maces, spears, all the other cool stuff. The jaguar pelts and other cool things that go along with that. So I think they've uh, they've uh, mined some good information from South American uh, cultures in order to get started. It's a level 1 to 12 adventure. Most uh, adventures cap out around 10. So it's uh, just, uh, just the right size of campaign for you. There's an insane amount of prop planes going around my house during the day. So, <laughs> oh man, maybe... Uh, I don't know how many more times I'm going to be recording during the day. I'm trying to save some time to make it easier at night, especially on Tuesdays. Things go late. But, uh, you know, if it bothers you guys, then let me know. I'll figure it out. There's just such a constant amount of traffic and things going around, skies and streets and all that kind of stuff. This is the Kaleidoscope co uh, Collection Quality Affordable Handmade Dice. Um, if you've been following other dice campaigns, you know they get really expensive. And these guys have found a, a different way of doing their inclusions and making a fairly simplified uh, die that uh, still looks nice but isn't really going to break the bank and be too bad. If you want something you can't find otherwise in your local game shop for the 50 cents or 25 cents that they go for, then you can give these ones a go. Different kind of dice campaign. This is for your 3D printer, 25 digital dice. Now, I will warn you, you need to calibrate your 3D printer. So if you're going to do it on a resin printer, it's a little bit easier. But if you're going to do it on FDM, then you got to make sure that your X and Ys are as close as possible to being accurate. You want to make those little calibration cubes because otherwise it'll roll funny and you won't have a, a real good die. So um, just keep that part in mind uh, with the thorns and all that kind of stuff. I'm assuming that they expect you to have a resin printer. Um, they might break off uh, with different pieces uh, or unless you get ABS-like res resins or even a... Flexible resin might work um, with all the little pointy bits. Uh, otherwise, you can get these guys down here that don't have as many pointy bits ready to break off. And uh, you can go from there, paint them yourself, do different things uh, however you like. Uh, it's just a, a different method of making some interesting ways of rolling. Then we have more dice. These ones are inspired by tarot stuff. So if you want to check that out, they come in this little leather faux leather box that's kind of neat as you can see little inclusions stars all that kind of stuff but uh all based on tarot and some folks trying to get a jump on the modular deck box before wormwood comes out with theirs later in the summer and uh, these look like they're all 3d printed out um so it's a neat idea uh 20 bucks for a box uh, you know, maybe just selling the STLs, um, but if you don't have a printer yourself, then uh, maybe uh, this will work for you, um, and maybe it's cheaper to buy from these guys, but otherwise, it looks like something that, you know, could be designed pretty easily, so it might be better, it might make more money just selling the STLs. I have a set of dice called the Arcana Core Musical Dice. And I thought something similar like this popped up not too long ago. It's up to 70,000 almost here. And uh, as you roll them, they make little bell chimes. And that's cool. Maybe we saw it on uh, a different platform like GameFound. I'm not really sure, but it does sound really familiar. Then we have Protect Your Effing Cards, which is a card sleeve campaign. Uh, I don't know that um, this is something that people want on uh, their shelves. I don't know if it's something that they want in their stores. Just throwing curse words around doesn't necessarily mean it's a better product. So when you have the other games like what was on the last episode uh, for Tuesday uh, coming out with you know really good sizes and lots of variety and other stuff like that, it's hard to say that this is the best uh, marketing campaign. Then we are finally down to models. These are 32 millimeter fantasy adventurers, all different types and sizes. You got wizards and knights and dead zombie folk and dwarves with crazy uh, stuff on their heads and uh, rather nimble berserkers 
and different barbarians and other cool pieces. Uh, if you're riding a dodo bird or a chocobo, you paint it however you want. Uh, samurai with pigtails, lots of different options. So yeah, if they look good, then uh, get these. And from Archon Studio, we have Dungeons and Laser Encounters, different terrains, miniatures. It says 5e compatible, but I mean, they're minis. You do whatever you want with them. <laughs> um, and uh, you get all these stretch goals. You get a nice looking Tarrasque. I don't know if you'll ever fight the Tarrasque, but everybody likes having them because they look cool. Paint them up however you like. And you can see how nice the terrain looks, different uh, Myconids and other crazy adventurer uh, problems that you can see in there. And for scale, check it all out. Maps and other neat things. So if you've been needing some uh, printable pieces, then uh, there's a lot going on here. I think these are uh, maybe made out of plastic. And you're buying whole model sets. So for 400 bucks, yeah, I would assume that's the case. Uh, so you don't need a printer. Archon, I think, has... So these connectors, is it open lock? It might be. The way that the connectors are set up. But there's a lot going on. You can check it out. It's uh, just started out. Again, crazy outdoor sounds because of the daytime. Then from the Billings of New Zealand, there's a couple of them that are talented sculptors. This one is Neil Billings. You have scorpions and their egg sacks and other cool things um, made to be giants. Most of the stuff that he creates is for 3D printing, so you can uh, print it to whatever size you think is appropriate for your characters and uh, enjoy some of the other stuff that he's created if you want to pick that up too always look pretty lifelike and uh you know they come in lots of different cool colors if you want to go the extra mile with your scorpion get some uh, uh powder that glows in the dark and slip that in over your paint and uh, it'll be just like a real spider then for 75 millimeter not necessarily for your gaming but for your your art stuff dioramas all that kind of thing or maybe you know double the size you have a real epic uh person uh, that you will encounter um, dwarves with pugs, um, whatever, oh, chilling on a, uh, uh, boar, you know, just different characters doing interesting things, having a sandwich with a robot, uh, got yourself a dinosaur, all these kinds of weird and interesting things. This dinosaur, are they dromosaurs? Uh, with the, the head thing going on, uh, Jurassic World, the latest one. There's a couple of them pop in. You can see all kinds of neat things. But as you can see, 124th scale pug, different uh, little things to be whimsical and interesting for your painting challenges. Roman villas, places to stay. So if you are going to buy one of those gladiator games or you got the Death Coliseum from, uh, I think, Titan Forge. Um, or it was either Titan Forge, Crippled God, or uh, one of those guys on Patreon in the last couple months. It was a super awesome coliseum. Maybe you need a place to stick all the spectators, stick all the people that are the trainers. You can reinvent Spartacus. Whatever you're going to do, STL World has some interesting buildings for you to enjoy if that's what you want to use. Um, political intrigue, uh, you know, all the crazy things that can happen in a Roman campaign. They're all here for you. And sometimes you need a uh, trash guy. Sometimes you need a guy that's just moving containers around. And that's what you have here, a transport. You want to make a uh, a train full of uh, cargo and then have it be chased down and have a, a train heist in the middle of a sci-fi uh, epic. This is your chance to do it. So you need shipping containers. This is your chance to get more. So uh, check all these cool things out. Goddess of Desire Succubus Queen. This is a 3D printable, beautifully constructed uh, statue. So you can see all the cool things going on. That base with the uh, skeletal uh, stuff making out the chair. Uh, just a, a beautiful piece. Would be a lot of fun to paint. 
Then we have the Dead Nature Army. So this is a combination of skeletons that also have um, some natural world things thrown in. So you can think, see like from here, the staff is more of a druidic staff. And uh, these guys as skeletons, they have uh, maybe um, a mushroom uh, that's growing on them, a fungal version of uh, control that's keeping them going, something like a cordyceps. So it's a neat concept. Uh, have not seen too much of it. And if you've been looking for something interesting and different, this might be the time to do it. You can paint them up as chunky and uh, you know bloody and all that as you want and then really push the idea of it being a fungal cordyceps based uh, zombie skeleton thing. And that will work too. And these are all separated out. So let's say you did have a um, druid or ranger and you wanted to go for more of a uh, um, a natural look in the weapons, then you can pull the weapons out uh, on their own. Even mounts and other cool things to go along with it. I got to applaud them. They made it uh, a very interesting range here. And then six millimeter cities. So if you need something for your giant mechs or kaiju or whatever to blow up, then uh, you have a futuristic uh, cityscape that you can create with these little tiny uh, buildings and blow them up, do whatever you got to do. And uh, if you're into metal minis and you still want more sci-fi stuff, then you can get the aristocrats and retinue. And these aren't necessarily combat driven individuals, but they do make the world a little more interesting. So if you just not been necessarily always looking for the next military mini uh, for the future. You want something that looks a little more like Ruby Rod or any of those other types of weird characters, then uh, maybe some of these guys will help you with that, even though there are some uh, military folks to go as well. And if you're going to drop terrain onto another planet, then maybe these guys uh, will help you uh, create that world and that city. These are Terran droppable locations that feel like they come out of starcraft um fairly large as you can see and they are of the scale that would fit your regular uh mini size so not the six millimeter but closer to the 30 millimeter scale, uh, scale size so these folks are big but they're also um like i said very evocative of starcraft and that can be very enticing one quick correction uh, that happened while I was going through all the files. This dragon, I guess, didn't record the audio, but it's a dragon, STL files. You can check it out. There's nothing else in the campaign. It's just this dragon. Now third anniversary um, from Juan Lerma. 412 STLs from 14 different campaigns. Basically, this is combinations of things. So um, some of them are safe for work some of them are not i remember this one here from brazilian mythology especially it looked really awesome uh from a couple years ago and uh he's got just different uh pieces from all over the place always been a skilled sculptor and this is just a time to collect it all together and uh put it into a nice um package for you guys if uh you like the work from before and want it at a some type of discounted price uh 30 bucks for two everything for 70 so 14 campaign 70 it's not a bad you know price more space troopers this is part one of a co uh, different collection and let's scroll down and you can see they're for 3d printing although it looks like they're in metal so um that just is the way that they were s rendered out you got insect armies uh, you have humans, very well detailed. Uh, if you wanted to scale them up, it'd probably look a little bit better. Um, turtles, so some type of mechanical turtle. Um, so if you're like in Starfinder, like I wish I had turtles, you're all be all set. And then a very space knight look in the barony. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, fanatics, uh, uh, they, I guess more like a samurai helmet, uh, on those guys. Uh, they call them immortals, but 
I don't know if that's supposed to be like um, the Xerxes army. Different cyborgs. Uh, these ones. Eh, okay, they're neat. There's all different types from Mr. Ivan. But where are you going to put all this stuff? Where are you going to fight them, right? You got all these different characters. This is 180 files of places to fight, pl ways to make you have a cool arena in various styles. So some of them are fantasy themed. Some of them are steampunk or modern themed. Some of them are future themed. There's lots of different ones. You got this whole Eldritch set. If you wanted to have little squiggles and things coming out of the ground um, to uh, make it feel like it's from doom. This is a lot of cool scatter terrain that, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, right? There's a lot of cool scatter terrain for you to pick up if uh, you would like to have a very well-populated and atmospheric location for your gaming to occur on. More 3D printable people now. Clash, Clash of the King Slayers. So these are chess pieces. You don't need to use them as chess pieces, but you can. And it's meant to make things way more cool and interesting. And if you're going to do these 3D printed, I would say put some weights in the bottom. Plan ahead for that just because uh, it gives a better feel. Um, you don't necessarily need to do them solid. But if you put a little uh, iron washer or something in the bottom of them, then they don't tip over. And it feels good when you move it around. So uh, great detail. And, uh, you know, it's got uh, a war theme to go along with it. You don't necessarily need to use it for chess. I think it'll work just great in different places. So, um, yeah, just like I say, think about maybe throwing in. And if, if there's anything like these uh, voids, put a metal washer or something in there. And, uh, man, you'll, you'll feel better. Pretty darn cool, though. Different type of combat. Ralph Parthas Chaos Wave from Thunderbolt Mountain. These are metal minis. And there's all these different videos and PDFs and things like that that they have attached to it. Basically, if you like Raul Partha um, and their content, then you'll be set here. They fit pretty well within the other British releases, but they're a little bit better detailed, I think, than a lot of the stuff we've seen. Um, less cartoony, slightly less cartoony in the way that the faces and uh, bodies have been designed, but still fits within... Um, a lot of that uh, other world, if you've been buying from Midland Miniatures or many other places in the UK, then um, these should fit in pretty well. This is coming from, let's go back to the top, Delaware, Ohio. So <laughs> um, if you're into Chaos Wars, you can play that game or anything else because they pretty much fit uh, just about any fantasy genre. And another set of sci-fi buildings. Here is, uh, they're all pay what you want, and you know they have this uh, spire uh, look to them, a little bit like um, aircraft towers, like you'd see in maybe a spaceport or that kind of fun thing. So uh, yeah, if you're gonna invade or if you're gonna set yourself up with a um, barter town, anything like that, then maybe this will be something not quite like a a metropolitan area, but something that might be out there in the outskirts of uh, some simple buildings that were modular that people started to put up when they uh, homesteaded. And uh, you can tell a lot of interesting story with uh, the table that you're going to create uh, based on, uh, you know, the terrain that you choose and all the scatter stuff. There's lots of different options and cool things. You can make it even some kind of crazy wizard outpost or uh, a military outpost um, if that's what you wanted to do as well that you're going to raid so pay what you want though it's definitely cheap enough and another dragon incredible realms nulan and tinja 500 stls but first up we see the dragon um, this is a very interesting character here i like the um uh spider queen look to a lot of these i always wanted to do uh, Varenia or Zarenia, I forgot off the top of my head her name. Uh, she's a succubus in the Jonathan L. Howard Johannes Cabal series. Half her body's a spider. I like to be able to put that together. Lots of nice buildings to ruin and destroy and you know run around in. Loxodonts and cat people, 
Pathfinder, it doesn't matter. Uh, it has a lot of these types of characters you can use in D&D uh, &D if you wanted to, but like I said, Pathfinder as well. Um, different uh, styles of heroes. Some of them got pork you know, bellies and all that kind of cool stuff. So they don't always have to be huge muscle men. Lots of scatter terrain, neat pieces. So this is a fairly inclusive um, group of things, even dice towers to throw in there. So if you want a consistent uh, style and you haven't already bought a ton of pieces, then why not check out what they uh, offer out there in Ireland? And that's it. I'm calling it. There's a lot of campaigns to go through. Hope you guys found some cool stuff that you enjoy. And uh, you have a nice week along with all the other cool things that are also going on. I don't know what's coming out movie-wise this week. Maybe Elvis. There might be something else. But uh, that'll be neat. I'm going to probably end up watching some Miss Marvel while I wait for this thing to render. And so far it's been an interesting show i like the way that they uh, have so much stuff going on in the background to help facilitate the story and make it interesting so i don't know you guys tell me what you got going on this week you guys have a good one uh if it's if it wasn't father's day last weekend it's father's day this weekend so be sure to uh, get a hold of somebody if you've got one and uh let them know you appreciate them